discuss in the course of industrial revolution we are going to discuss about the consequences okay and how these consequences can be uh, okay so how an applied question is asked on these consequences also we are going to see sir so let's try to understand okay the course of industrial revolution sir so just listen to me okay so what is the course of this industrial revolution okay first and foremost in the course of this industrial revolution okay we need to understand that the production system in england it has got completely transformed during industrialization sir okay earlier before this industrial revolution okay the production process is known as the putting out systems understand this okay the production process is called as putting out system and from this putting out system the production process has shifted to a format of production which is called as factory production sir okay so putting out system is nothing but okay it is very similar to the idea of work from home sir okay what is work from home okay so work from home is you will do your main manufacturing or production process at your home sir yeah, and in work from home usually what happens the efficiency of the work is less right yes or no or is it higher okay so definitely it is less right okay then along with being less okay in this work from home concept which is called as putting out system the thing is not just the individual but the production is done by the entire family's labor sir okay not just the individual it is family labor which is involved in a, the production process then apart from family labor working here okay the tools of production they are also owned by the workers are you getting what i'm trying to say tools are also owned by the worker family labor ka kaam tha or it is also a concept of work from home this is called as putting out system of production so naturally in this kind of production if a good is produced would the good be costly or cheap sir definitely it will be very costly so definitely the outcome of this is okay the goods production is costly and along with that the goods production is also inefficient okay kabhi man kiya to kaam kare nahi to nahi in work from home there is a beauty right so there is a work from home okay so there is inefficiency and the goods which are produced this through this system they are usually costlier than uh, the factory produced goods sir and industrial revolution led to what it led it to the breakdown of this putting out system and it's a replacement by a system of production which is called as factory based production sir and in factory based production what happens is first and foremost the workers have to come to okay a place which is called as the factory and in the factory they are going to work sir are you following this and along with that in this factory based production system there is no concept of family labor sir it is primarily based on okay individual labor who are employed for the sake of a wage who are called as wage labor sir so wage based labor is one idea factory based production is the second idea and the third idea is earlier the tools were owned by the worker now what happens is in the factory the tools are owned by the industrialists sir and usually the tools are very heavy and big so because of which reason the production cannot take place at the house so the tools are owned by the industrialist or factory owner sir then along with owning the tools usually in factory based production process the goods can be produced at a cheap price sir okay along with being produced at a cheap price the goods also will be produced in an efficient manner and this cheap and efficient manner of production of goods is usually called as okay mass production of goods ever heard this term mass production okay mass production means cheap similar goods are produced okay in large number then it is called as mass production sir so this way what happened is in england's industrial revolution the course is determined by the transition from this putting out system to factory systems and this putting out system it was also present in india too and in india this system is called as the famous dadni system okay in india this putting out system is called as dadni system okay so uh, dad okay dadni or dadani it is called as any which way so dadni system it is called as so in india we had the same system which is called as putting out or dadni system which used to work in this fashion sir is it clear okay so this is the the case with the production system and in england in the course of industrial revolution the putting out system was transformed into factory system sir 
and most of the technological innovations of the industrial revolution they occurred in the factory floor i think i told about this of these innovations the majority of the innovations they occurred in the textile production and you might be knowing that in textile production there are three to four important steps sir and in textile production one of the important step is this is step which is called as spinning okay spinning is one step where okay the textile or the um, or the uh, cotton it will be converted into a fiber sir. fiber means thread huh? yarn yarn yes okay fiber or yarn is the same thing so yeah no not same thing but uh, spinning it its outcome is this thing which is called as thread or yarn sir. it produces yarn then after spinning the next step in uh, the textile process is weaving sir. are you understanding this okay one is spinning and the second one is weaving and weaving it converts the yarn which has been produced into a proper cloth sir. are you following this yes so two techniques one is spinning and the second one is weaving and now in industrial revolution in england the main innovations they happened in both spinning and weaving technologies sir and the first innovation okay it is known as plying shuttle sir it is known as plying shuttle earlier in england in order to produce a textile two people were required okay one person was laying the horizontal threads one other person is laying the vertical threads sir samajh mein aa raha hai because in a cloth they will have both horizontal and vertical uh, uh, threads right so for that there was requirement of two people for weaving sir but what happened is this flying shuttle was a new innovation wherein the thread which is to be supposed to be laid horizontally what they did is they started binding the thread to a uh, wooden equipment sir and this wooden equipment is so small that after laying one vertical thread okay what the worker will do is he will throw the flying shuttle from one side of the cloth to the other side sir he will catch it then again he will throw it are you following this so this way what happens is a single worker has replaced the work of two workers in the weaving process because of flying shuttle sir okay i'll show the images of everything okay how the flying shuttle looks okay it is better for me to show the images to parallelly one second Okay, this is how flying shuttle looks like. Okay, so this is be, thread will be tied there. Then after that, it will be thrown from one side to another. It will lay the horizontal lines. Sir. Vertical lines only will be placed with hand. Horizontal lines will be. through this flying shuttle sir so this was the first technical innovation in industrial revolution this increased the speed of weaving sir the speed of weaving it has increased so much that the spinning was not keeping pace with weaving sir spinning has become very weaving has become very fast but there was no thread available in order to weave sir now when spinning was becoming slow what happened is the next innovation is this instrument which is called as spinning jenny sir spinning jenny is nothing but the charka with a gearing system sir understand this carefully in a charka what happens one rotation it will lead to only one thread right charka aap kabhi aapne dekha sir charka mein aisa rotate karte karte you will create a thread sir charka is used for spinning only you will create just one piece of thread by spinning sir but now what happened is in england's factory floor they have understood that if this spinning wheel is associated with multiple number of spindles can you see them sir with one rotation of the charka what happens is more number of threads can be spinned at the same time sir samajh mein aa raha hai aapko dikh raha hai sir spindle yahan pe okay so then that is charka charka you rotate then more number of so there will be more number of threads will be which will be bound at the same time so this increased the spinning speed sir okay and the human being whoever is catching hold of it he is turning it okay and more number of uh, weaving or more weaving is happening at the same time sir for more spinning more spinning is happening at the same time so this way the second innovation is this then after that what happened is okay one person rather than using human labor he felt that it would be better to automate this process and in order to automate this process what he did is he built his factory very nearby to a river sir and in the river he placed one turbine and this turbine it will be turning because of the water flow and the turning of the turbine it will turn the wheel of the spinning wheel sir it will be attached from outside to inside as the turbine rotates in the water 
the same way the spinning will also will rotate and this will remove the need for human being here yes so and this equipment is called as a water frame sir and water frame attaches the spinning wheel to a turbine which is rolling in water sir and this has in fact further speeded up the spinning process are you understanding this so this way uh, the factories were all being built on the river banks where there was without any human help human beings will only inspect sir the entire physical work will be done by the river sir yes it was jugad no factory okay no um, no factory sorry no university no technological innovation sir it is a complete jugad sir then after that what happened is one fine gentleman what he did is he understood that steam also has an energy of its own sir here one person he understood that steam has energy of its own and this person okay so his name is james stephen sir sir okay so no huh? james watt yes james watt is the person's name so what he did is he observed that just like water steam also has energy of its own okay and what he did is he developed a machine of his own which is called as a steam engine sir and in the steam engine rather than directly using the water to run the turbine okay what they will do is they will heat the water and after heating the water the steam will be generated and the steam is going to turn the turbine and the steam turbine is attached to this spinning wheel sir this is the next step in the innovation and this is in fact very useful primarily because okay under this water frame system you have to set up your factory only on river banks then along with that will the flow of water will be will it be uniform sir it is going to vary a lot and if it varies what happens is there is a high possibility for the thread to break if the speed varies whereas in steam engine you can control steam in order to maintain a uniform speed for the turbine sir it will be far more efficient so turbine they started turning and once they started tur turning the turbine so the production process it in fact went into hyperdrive sir so they started producing more more and more threads sir so then at the same time once the steam engine was developed people started understanding that the same steam technology can also be used in order to okay uh, in order to bring in transportation too. the steam can be used to run any form of turbine and one form of running the turbine is to attach the steam engine to rail locomotives are you understanding this so they attach the same steam engine to a railway uh, railway bogey and what they did is they started boiling water with the help of coal and this boiled water it will turn the turbine and run the rail loco locomotive sir this was the next technology which came into being so which is the development of rail locomotive and it was done by james stephenson sir he developed the rail locomotive then after that the spinning process has become super advanced sir so at this point of time what one person did is he developed a instrument which is called as power loom which is started automating the process of weaving too sir not just spinning even weaving also can be automated with the same steam turbine bolt okay he developed a system which is called as power loom and this power loom by using steam energy it was able to run the machine and the outcome is if you feed in the yarn it will lead to the creation of cloth sir samajh mein aaya aapko yes power loom was developed then at the same time in order to build these machines initially most of the machines were being built with the help of wood sir okay wood se jyada se jyada machines ban raha tha but the problem is when you are creating a steam engine what will happen is the wood will automatically get affected because of the continuous moisture sir and they required a stronger material in order to withstand okay primarily because they also faced some problems like blasting of the boilers okay if you compress the steam at one place for quite long period of time if the material is not strong enough then the boiler is going to blast up sir and these were the problems that they were facing so they required a stronger material in order to make these machines and in order to okay develop the steam engine they start wanted a stronger material sir and with this intention what happened is there was a process which was developed which is called as bessemer process which converted iron into a highly strong okay and highly useful material so which is called as a steel sir and steel was created through a process called bessemer process and once the bessemer process created steel for all the equipments they started using steel sir and they attached the same steam turbine to ships and this led to the emergence of steam engines steam engine ships you know okay where the turbine is run with the help of the same sir coal water okay then after that steam and steam will turn the turbine and you can navigate is it clear rail locomotive okay steam engine in uh, ships all of these things were developed iron and steel was developed and once iron and steel was developed what happened is it in fact substantially helped the railway department sir 
railway department and uh, England started getting con connected internally a lot with the help of railways. Okay, and the railways in fact led to a lot of ease in transport and communications. Then apart from this, one more thing that they did is at this time they developed a new technology in order to develop roads, sir. Because earlier all the roads were just kacha roads. Okay, kacha roads usually the problem is what during the rainy season they are going to okay be washed away. Yes, so that is the reason why during this process they developed in England itself a process of making roads which is called as macadamized roads. Macadamized roads. Macadamized roads means you know about Damber Road, sir. Damber, what is it called, sir? So the right now the roads outside where a black uh, tar is poured, tar road it is called. Huh? What do you call them? Huh? Damber Road, you know, no? Damber is what? The tar. Okay, so which one? So that is the same, whatever it is, I think you understood. The black roads that we have. Then the black roads where okay, the stones are crushed first. Then after that, a black liquid is poured in order to hold on to the stones. Are you understanding this, sir? These roads are called as macadamized roads, sir. And they developed in England first. And this also helped in the transport infrastructure. So railways, roads developed. Then along with that, the postal department also developed substantially in England, sir. And as part of the development, they started a post system which is called as penny post system, sir. You know about this penny post? Ever heard about penny post, sir? Penny post is a post where the post card can be sent to any place at a uniform rate, sir. Okay, before your generation, I think there used to be some yellow cards, sir. Did you see yellow cards? Yellow cards, if you write something and write the address, huh? uh, postcard. Okay, that postcard is penny post, sir. It means that uniform rate may you can send it to any place across the country, sir. So, this way they developed the penny post which helped in communication too. So, all of these things one after the other they led to innovations and these innovations brought about the industrial revolution in England, sir. Are you understanding this? So, just I will show some images, sir. So, this is one geared spinning jenny, sir. So, which where one rotation of the spinning wheel it leads to multiple spindles. Then after that I will show one, uh, this is water frame, sir. Can you see this water frame? Okay, so this is water frame where it is used for spinning, sir. So this is the okay spinning wheel, sir. So here on top with the gear, it will be attached to a water turbine, which will be placed inside a river, sir. The river will turn the water turbine and it in turn turns this wheel and it leads to spinning, sir. Samaj mein aapko? Yes. So then after this, this is power loom, sir. Okay, the working of power loom is a little more complicated. It is a little technical. We need not know about it. But this is how power loom looks like, sir. So, weaving is done in an automatic fashion by connecting this. Uh, okay, so can you see that uh, these are not threads, sir. Okay, this is, uh, leave it be, this is power loom, sir. Then after power loom, okay, one more is, this is the first steam engine, sir. James Watt steam engine. Okay, so steam engine may, so this is the place, this is the boiling can where the water is boiled and this will create steam. And the steam will turn the turbine. Are you getting this? Okay, so this is James Watt's steam engine. Then after James Watt's steam engine, the next one is okay, Crompton's mule, sir. Mule is nothing but attaching the steam engine to the spinning wheel is called as mule. Are you understanding this? So then after this, the next, so these are the main innovations, sir. So this way, the course of industrial revolution, it is based on the transition from factory system, sorry, putting out system to factory system. And it is also associated with numerous new technologies, sir. Samaj mein aapko? Yes. Now, okay, what happened is England underwent a thorough going process of industrialization, sir. And between 1740, 1760 to 1840, they underwent a thorough process of industrialization. And what is the outcome of industrialization? You try to guess, sir. What will happen when this kind of industries were developed? Okay, so first let's discuss about the positive impact, sir. Then we will come to the negative. First and foremost, it will lead to higher production. And because of mass production of goods, what happens is overall the material prosperity of people will increase. When you have very high production, okay, then automatically the prices of the products are going to come down, sir. And this leads to material prosperity. This is the first and foremost thing, sir. It led to substantial material prosperity, primarily because the factory produced goods are much cheaper than the goods which are produced in the house, sir. Or handicraft goods say always the machine made goods are cheaper. Is it not true? Is it true or not? 
usually the handicrafts are costlier than the machine made goods right yes so this way the material prosperity of the entire society increased then apart from that any other positive outcome okay so second one is it led to employment in new sectors of economy it led to employment okay new jobs have been created in urban areas employment it has led to then apart from that cheap cost of uh, so that is material prosperity i told about there okay cheap commodities okay commodities will become cheap because of mass production of goods sir then okay one more important outcome is significant development in transport and communication railways yes so then apart from that which one sir uh, so in fact this led to substantial saving of time of people okay in new leisurely time it has been created leisure has become a common thing because you need not produce everything that you need okay the factory is going to do it for you. so this led to leisure in life okay then apart from leisure sir in fact industrial revolution converted england as a global superpower sir is it true or not england became a global superpower because primarily because of industrialization sir it was able to win in wars against napoleon bonaparte yes so and it got converted into a global superpower because of industrialization yes then uske sath mein what else is there sir is there any other positive outcome i think we have covered most of the issues right yes so we covered most of the issues definitely it increased okay the material prosperity of people and it played a very important role in uh, decreasing absolute poverty in society sir this is also important absolute poverty in society it has come down because of industrialization are you following this absolute poverty how will it come down sir uh, basic needs will be fulfilled because all of them are being mass produced they will be fulfilled easily so the idea is it was able to reduce absolute poverty in society sir now apart from these positive consequences industrial revolution yes sir reduced uh, so it was able to in fact liberate human beings from physical labor and from physical labor people started focusing more on intellectual labor innovation intellectual labor they were given more significance than physical labor so this way industrial revolution definitely has some positive outcomes of its own sir but at the same time the industrial revolution the same industrial revolution it also has numerous negative consequences what negative consequences he told about hmm. yes so employment in some sectors but at the same time okay unemployment in the traditional sectors of the economy is the outcome there are some new employment opportunities but at the same time in the traditional sectors of the economy there is unemployment yes or no sir the unemployment in england because of the destruction of the traditional sector was so huge that people started considering the new machines which have been created as the work of devils many people started considering that are ye to ye aake humko bahut nuksan kar diya hamara livelihood chala ja raha hai machines ke wajah se many people started feeling that the machines are the work of devils sir and at this time in england a very unique movement has started which is called as luddite movement this is very prominent this is a term in english language too and this movement is called as luddite movement and in luddite movement what happened is many of the traditional workers who became unemployed they started getting into the factories and they started deliberately destroying the machines sir aapko samajh mein aa raha hai sir okay aap government office mein kaam kar rahe hain okay aapka kaam hai data entry suddenly a computer aa gaya okay aur computer aapka sara kaam chhin liya ओके सो रात में ऑफिस का चाबी लेके आपको अंदर जाके यू ट्राई टू डिस्ट्रॉय द कंप्यूटर ये सर नो द पीपल हु आर अगेंस्ट न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी इन सोसाइटी आर ऑलवेज कॉल्ड एज लडाइट सर अगर कोई भी नया टेक्नोलॉजी के अगेंस्ट कोई काम कर रहा है उसको अभी भी लडाइट बोलते हैं एंड दिस लडाइट मूवमेंट इट स्टार्टेड इन इंग्लैंड प्राइमरली बिकॉज ऑफ हाई अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट इन द ट्रेडिशनल सेक्टर्स ऑफ इकोनॉमी सर जान पूछ के डिस्ट्रॉय करना जान पूछ के ओके okay, उनका working may interfere karna so all of these things were done sir so this is called as the famous luddite movement this is one negative consequence then uske sath mein ha yes so i'll go one by one so the second outcome is it led to unmanageable urbanization which led to the development of slums in england sir london became a city of slums primarily because of industrial revolution 
okay, because many people started migrating, they did not have proper infrastructure, no money to rent out or construct a good house. So, what they did is they started settling down in large number in slums. Sir. Is it clear? Yes. Yes. So, automatically whenever the slums come into being, what happens is slums are usually associated with crime. Good. Okay. In fact, in England at this point of time, the crime rate was so high that the jails were completely filled, sir. There was no place for jails. So, at that time, the British government, they started arresting people, okay, putting them in ships and sending them to Australia, sir. Huh? What, sir? Not Tihar, sir. So, kya karte the? Okay, sub prisons were completely full, sir. And there was no scope to arrest more people. But at the same time, because of slums, there was a lot of crime in England, sir. Unable to tolerate this crime, even for simple crimes like pickpocketing, people were placed on ship and they were transported to Australia, sir. <laughs> Australia was a prison colony, sir. Are you understanding this? It was a prison colony. And that is the reason why that same criminal element is seen among Australians even today, sir. Particularly, you see cricket matches of Australians, sir. They will try to break all possible rules, ranging from sledging to ball tampering. They are ready to do anything. Primarily, why? Because their ancestors are criminals of England who have been transported for crimes to Australia. They are true, 100% true. <laughs> okay, so David Warner, okay, Steve Smith, all are involved in ball tampering, right? Why? So, they are always breaking rules, sir. You see, any segment, any sport you see, Australians are the people who are most notorious for breaking rules, sir. Okay, take rugby, take cricket, take any sport. They are that way. Why? Primarily because their ancestors are criminals. Plums developed who have criminals pakna gaya tha, unna unko rakne ke liye jail nahi tha, to Australia based I am not joking. This is very true. Australia is called as a prison colony, sir. It is called as a prison colony. So, this is slums is the second outcome. Okay, so then you naturally might ask, how are slums related to crime? Okay, primarily because slums have very poor public infrastructure, sir. Okay, then along with having very poor public infrastructure, the people who live in slums, their livelihood is always very, very difficult, sir. And usually crime comes out of necessity here, sir. Are you understanding this? Crime comes out of necessity here, okay, stealing some food. Okay, if they steal some food, they will be arrested. And once a person gets arrested, what happens is he will come out as a bigger criminal, sir. The prison system is the method to convert a small criminal into a big criminal. I am not joking. This is the case with the prison system, sir. Anywhere you go in the world, it is the same problem. Okay, you send a person for a small crime to a prison, he will come out as a dada, big criminal. Okay, sab log bhi uske darte ki kyunki bhai to prison ko ja ke aaye, sir. Okay, so bolke so chota don se bada don banna hai to jail ko ja ke. Okay, so that is that is the case. Now, the second one is, apart from slums, negative consequence is someone else told about uh, pollution, right? Okay, in fact, environmental destruction and pollution are one important outcome, sir. All possible raw materials of England have been extracted. So, that is the reason why today England does not have any raw materials. It does not have any proper forest also, primarily because most of them were destroyed during industrial revolution. And it led to pollution. In the city of London, city became a city of pollution, sir. And slums and pollution together, they used to lead to a lot many pandemics and epidemics in London, sir. There were n number of pandemics and epidemics in London, where people in large number, they used to die, primarily because it was, the situation was very bad, sir. Then apart from this, one more negative outcome is, even though absolute poverty has reduced, relative poverty in society, it has substantially increased during this period, sir. Where relative poverty is the rich started becoming super rich and the poor became very poor, sir. Are you following this? Then apart from this, because of the excess population, because of the destruction of the traditional industry, what happened is, there was, okay, a lot of unemployed population. And whenever there is unemployed population, in large number, automatically the wages will come down, sir. Because for some work uh, for which a person is ready to do at 100 rupees, one other person will be ready to do it for 50, sir. One other person will come and do it for 20 rupees. So, automatically what happens is the wages will come down whenever there is problem of high unemployment in society, sir. They had high unemployment, wages have come down and wages were so low that the people were not able to afford their own food, sir. Are you following this? So, this way it led to unemployment and wage reduction. It led to 
So and people were being hired at a very cheap price. Then along with that, earlier in any production process, uh, physical labor was very important. That is the reason why most of the manufacturing sectors, they were dominated by men, sir. Because men are physically stronger than women. Okay, not all men. Okay, so you should not compete with PT Usha or Karnam Maleshwari. So, but average, if you take the society, usually the men are physically stronger than the women, sir. Okay, but because of that reason, in manufacturing, there was always male dominance, sir. But now, the physical labor is taken over by the mission. And the missions can be run even by women or children too, sir. So, that is the reason why for the first time in organized factory employment, women started being recruited, sir. Okay, but the women were being recruited primarily because they could pay lesser wages to the women, sir. On an average in industrialized England, the women's wage used to be one-third that of men's. Men ka wage say one-third come. Then along with that, they started recruiting children in large numbers, sir. And in fact, there were many instances where six to eight years children were hired and they were forced to work for 18 hours in the factory, sir. Okay, 18 hours. You can't study. Okay, they had to stand up and work. Six to eight years children. And many a times while working on the missionary, the children used to sleep off, sir. And by falling into the missions, they used to die. And industrial accident is a very common thing, thing in industrialized England, sir. Industrial accidents may, boilers used to be blasted away. Okay, people used to lose their hands, legs, because the missions, okay, they are going to run even, okay, if a hand comes in its way. They are not human beings to stop and see. Yes, sir. So, because of which reason, lot of industrial casualties and industrial safety was a negative out outcome of, absence of industrial safety is a negative outcome of industrialization, sir. Then, uske saath saath mein, any other negative outcome of industrialization? Huh? Insanitary or unsanitary conditions, okay, so slums ke mein, pollution ke mein. So, there are unsanitary conditions in uh, uh, the society, then apart from that, Very good. See, in fact, it had very high impact on colonialism and in the colonies like India, this led to the destruction of the traditional industries, sir, which is called as deindustrialization. So, it led to deindustrialization in colonies too. So, colonies may deindustrialization hua, wahape traditional industries destroy hua, slums aya, low wages, women and child labor, exploitation. Okay, all of these things became the standard features of industrialized England, sir. And unable to tolerate the problems of industrial England itself, what happened is the workers started establishing organizations which are called as trade unions. And it is in these trade unions itself, the ideas of socialism, they have taken their birth. Okay, so, in fact, the people's condition was so harsh and so bad. And this also led to the breakdown of joint family. Okay, it led to nuclearization of families primarily because urban settings are not suitable for joint families, sir. Urban settings are never suitable for joint families. You don't find an, in an urban area a house with 10 rooms, right? The standard is what? 1 BHK or 2 BHK, which can only support a nuclear family but not a joint family, sir. So, it led to the breakdown of the joint family system and in many cases, it also led to the breakdown of family system in itself, sir. Okay, primarily because the husband has to migrate to the urban area in order to work, sir. And he can't afford his wife and children to, to take his wife and children to the city. And when he can't afford, what happens is he will live in some slums or in some poor houses, hostels, and he will keep working, sir. So, this leads to breakdown of family system in itself. Yeah, sir. Economic? Economic failure or economic? Growth. So, see, we can definitely say that this period is known for its economic growth, sir. But this is also a period which is known for lack of development, sir. There is economic growth and underdevelopment. Are you understanding this? So, economic growth is not equivalent to development, sir. Development is increase in the capability and the possibilities for people. But, either kya ho tha? Reverse. Economy is growing rap rapidly, but at the same time, the people's conditions are becoming worse and worse. So, economic growth and underdevelopment is a characteristic trait of industrialized England, sir. No equity, no equity in society. Okay, unfairness. The rich started becoming super rich at this time. Okay, and the poor started becoming poorer and poorer. 
Are you understanding this? So, this is the outcome of industrialized England, sir. Now, just write down a question which has been given by UPSC that will make you understand okay, the issue even more clearly, sir. One second, I'll dictate the question. Why did the industrial revolution? Why did the industrial revolution first occur in England? Why did the industrial revolution first occur in England? Question mark. Question mark. Then discuss the quality of life of people discuss the quality of life of the people life of the people there discuss the quality of the life of the people there during industrialization during industrialization we'll stop stop then write how does it compare with that of how does it compare with that with that in india at present in india at present question mark okay this is a 15 marker question sir see what are they are asking sir at present in yes okay what are they asking see first they are asking causes of industrial revolution in England. Then after that they are asking about the impact on people's life that is consequence. Then the third part of the question is something which makes it a proper UPSC question sir. Okay, because the first two parts if they are asked it is like a general normal academic question sir. But now what they are saying is asking you to compare the situation of people in industrial England to that of India of today sir. It means that 1760 to 1840 is there any comparison with the people of India today? Bolke question puts Is it similar? Okay, so definitely urbanization is one thing. Then is it similar, sir? Not similar. You don't find slums in India? Okay, so first let's compare, sir. You don't you find slums? You find slums, okay? Don't you find okay underpaid paid wage laborer? Underpaid wage laborer we find women and child employment. Child employment has come down a little, but it is still prominent. Women and child employment that to paying them low salaries is something. Then industrial accidents, nuclear families is one more thing. Then pollution, yes, destruction of environment, yes, huh? Which one? Luddite, Luddites. Okay, Luddites, you don't, do you find them in India, sir? Not that much prominent, sir. One of the incident, so it's not very prominent. Okay, so it's not very prominent, sir. Okay, but uh, tell me. So, what, uh, so we are saying that almost today's India is very similar to England. Does it look good, sir? Ah. Yes, so very good. So, in fact, that is where you have to show your innovation, sir. So, in fact, uh, even though many of the problems are similar, the Indian government has taken numerous steps uh, in order to resolve these issues, sir. In order to develop the slums, we have started Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana. Okay, in fact, we also have an industrial code, okay, which promotes minimum wages idea. Then, along with minimum wages, we have industrial safety measures also in India. Okay. So, then Amrut is one more. So, in gen, what Amrut is that Janram, right? Amrut is uh, urban transformation. Yes, that is the same thing. Okay, that is earlier called as Janram, Jawaharlal Nehru National Urban Renewal Project. Now, it is called as Amrut. Which one? Tapped Water Commission. Uh, tapped Water Commission. So, we in fact are trying to change many things. So, what you have to say is first, 
okay in many respects in some of the respects definitely the problems are similar in industrialized india too but the thing is the indian government is trying to take numerous steps in order to resolve these problems unlike england bolke aapko likh ke uske baad kuch programs mention karke aapko conclude karna padega sir samajh mein aaya so this is how you need to answer this question this is a very very good question sir applied question samajh aaya sir yes so will you be able to write this answer now shall we have a look at the handout of industrial revolution in england the entire handout shall we have a look at in one go yes sir industrial revolution industrial revolution is a historic period in england's history between 1760 to 1850 40 when power driven machines replaced human and animal power in production and in new technology advancements to place in textile production iron and steel production transportation sector which led to mass production of goods sir this definition as is you have to write in your introduction sir you following this this is a good definition easy to understand easy to remember to sir yes so then after that reason for industrial revolution in england first look at this reasons you have to mark e s or p sir e means economic reasons economic reason is agriculture and commercial revolution is an economic factor please mark e there one ke bagal mein e likh lijiye economic factor usse which occurred in england provided basis for industrial revolution by providing capital agriculture surplus and labor maine bola tha na is teeno teeno cheez ke bare mein yes so there you write sir providing capital for middle classes you write providing capital for middle classes okay commercial revolution it occurred from 1450 to 17th century okay in england then agricultural revolution occurred crop rotation led to surplus in agriculture by 1850 samajh mein aaya sir so uske bagal mein likh lijiye this led to urbanization this led to urbanization and led to urbanization and cheap labor and availability of cheap labor urbanization and availability of cheap labor in urban areas yes so there is also an economic factor right now the political factor england had colonial support in terms of raw materials and market for finished products put a p there okay that is a political thing and then along with that england had many navigable rivers and canals which provided cheap transportation that is economic had huge resources of coal and iron and they are co-located leading to cheaper procurement of raw raw material economic had urbanized because of agricultural revolution and there was continuous supply of cheap labor so there is both social and economic sir whichever way you want to you segregate it sir okay so then after that uh, cheap labor from villages migrated that is not important sir then finance from bank that is bank of england that is economic factor yes so then after that there were numerous political factors to parliamentary system and respect for rule of law had stable in political institutions and policies there was protection for property rights then england was always secured by continental european politics by english channel okay so there you write sir they were never invaded in modern times okay not medieval times mein hua tha kuch they were never invaded in modern times sir they were never invaded in modern times modern times then after that next one is napoleon's continental system okay served as a boost for industrial revolution demand for war goods okay and also expansion of colonies helped industrialization in england sir samajh mein aaya sir war always means profit for capitalist sir okay so next one is okay this is a social factor sir that is protestarian work ethic also gave importance to industrial revolution in england okay so and along with that there is also set up of joint stock companies so there you write one small statement sir there is social factor social factor protestianism protestianism supported hard work and entrepreneurship supported hard work and entrepreneurship hard work and entrepreneurship then after that you write uh, one more statement sir next one in england most of the innovations occurred on factory floor 
in England, most of the innovations occurred on factory floor through tinkering, through tinkering, through tinkering, through tinkering, and IR is not and IR is not university led. IR IR means industrial revolution is not industrial industry sorry is not university led. IR is not university led. Clear sir? Yes. So now you see the process of industrialization, technological changes associated with industries. Mark a shift to power, special purpose machinery, factories and mass production. Okay. So those are normal sir. Production process moved from putting out system to factory system. I told about this right. So putting out system is work sorry. Putting out system is based on work at home. Tools were crude tools. No not efficient work lazy and final product is produced by families. So there you write. There you write costly and inefficient goods. Costly and inefficient goods. Then when it comes to the other one factory system worker moved to the production place. Tools became heavy machinery. Final product is based on division of labor, sir. Is it clear? That is what is called as factory system. There you write. Efficient and cheap goods are mass produced. Efficient and cheap goods are mass produced. Are mass produced. Then, okay, so they started using new raw materials. That is iron and steel. Energy sources, coal and steam. And machinery, if you see, John K, he developed the flying shuttle. Cartwright, okay, he developed the power loom, used water power for weaving. Yes. Then after that, James Watt, steam engine, James Stephenson, rail locomotive. Okay, so then after that, James Hargreaves, he developed spinning engine, sir. Okay, there you write, sir. Steam engine plus. Uh, no, no, not steam engine, sir. I am sorry. Spinning journey is that. Uh, please cross it out and write spinning journey. Single wheel, single wheel, multiple spindle, multiple spindle, multiple spindle production. Okay, multiple spindle production. Remember this, sir. I have shown the image. Okay, so one wheel, multiple spindle. Then after that, James Hargreaves, sorry, Richard Arkwright used water frame, sir. There you write. Attached water turbine to attached water turbine to spinning wheel. Attached water turbine to spinning wheel. Spinning wheel. Then after that, okay, the next one is Crompton, who developed this mule, sir. Mule is steam engine plus spinning wheel. Mule is steam engine plus spinning wheel. Steam engine plus spinning wheel. Then production of iron and steel occurred through December process. Development of railways, canal and macadamized routes. Yes. Now the consequences of industrial revolution are given, sir. The first consequence is population explosion, sir. The population explosion is one outcome of industrial revolution, sir. I forgot to tell about this. So, advancements in technology and better agricultural production led to better medical facilities and greater employment, which led to population explosion. Clear, sir? Whenever any industrialization happens, it will lead to most likely population explosion, sir. Are you following this? So, one outcome is population explosion. Then, so whether it is positive or negative is left to your discretion, sir. Okay, so population explosion, if positive, then positive, mein likh negative, hai to negative, mein likh Wo aapka marzi. Okay, so then after that, next one is it increased the material prosperity of people. Yes, so then long working hours, people started migrating to urban areas. Then there is no concept of industrial safety, no restriction for child labor who are working at decreased wages. Urban labor migrants had cultural shock because of breakdown of joint family system. And breakdown of family as an organization. Yes. So then after that, status of women okay, marked a dramatic change for women as many of them entered the workforce for the first time. 
women had to compete with men for jobs, female factory workers made only one third as that of men, sir. Women were paid less and worked more because of gender inequalities. It led to environmental destruction. It led to urbanization. Okay, so and also it led to rising middle classes, sir. Okay, so rising middle classes because more number of middle classes entered into the industrial economy as technicians, sir. Skilled. Skilled labor are middle class. Okay, semi skilled and unskilled labor are workers, sir. So much may I have? So this led to rise of middle classes, started owning factories, sent their males children to school and rose up in society due to increase in wealth, sir. It led to unmanageable urbanization. Social inequalities became steeper and starker. So there you write, sir. Rise in a relative inequality. Rise in relative poverty, not inequality. Rise in relative poverty, even though absolute poverty reduced. Even though absolute poverty reduced. Okay. So then after that, crowded and dirty cities, spread of disease, poor health and crime, sir. Add the word crime. And crime. Okay. And in fact, industrialization also led to an adverse psychological impact on the workers, sir. So I think I told it uh, as an example once in my modern India class, but at the cost of repetition, I will tell this, sir. So there is a very famous movie of Charlie Chaplin called Modern Times, sir. So, which shows this uh, problems of industrialization, sir. So, in that, Charlie Chaplin's work is every day, okay, from morning to evening, his only work is to turn a wrench and a tighten a screw, sir. Okay, subha se raat tak uska ek hi kaam rehta hai, okay, wrench ko ghuman, bas. Aur wo subha se saan tak kaam kar kar ke, okay, baar jata hai, sir. Okay, and the hand movement of turning a wrench, it becomes habitated for him, sir. While he is walking on the street, also he is doing the same action. Okay, so he goes on street, some policeman comes in front of him. Because this action has become common to him, he hits the policeman on him, his face, sir. Who tears karte? Who opens his button? Okay, kuch aisa hi hota hai. Then baad mein ghar mein jata hai, sir. And his wife brings him some soup. So because of this action, he throws the soup on his wife. Okay, uske baad bhi wo maar khata hai, sir. So, this way, what happens is in industrialization, the work that a worker does is repetitive and uncreative work, sir. And repetitive and uncreative work always leads to, okay, psychological implications for people. Earlier, kya hota tha? Okay, aapka man marzi, kab bhi, okay, aapka creativity use karke, aap produce karte the. Abhi factory mein aapka creativity ka koi scope hi nahi hai. Then along with that, okay, the person who is working, he doesn't even know that, Okay, who is consuming the final product that he is producing? Uska work ka meaning nahi rahega, sir. Except for money, there will no, be no other positive outcome of work. But usually, work should not only be monetarily rewarding, sir. It is also should be intellectually uh, stimulating. It should be creative. Only then people will have peace in life, sir. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. Production process. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Alienation from production process or product. The worker never knows that what is the outcome of his work. And apart from that, he does the same work repeatedly. Okay. Uncreatively, he does the work. So, this leads to adverse psychological implications, sir. Yes. So, today you go and ask any software engineer, they will tell about this. I am not joking. In most of the software engineers, they face the same problems of work related anxiety, not knowing that who is going to use their final product. Okay, so kaun use karega, wo sab pata nahi sir. Aap toh, you are just become a cog in the wheel sir. The word that is used is cog in the wheel. It means that, okay, so you don't have any control over your life or your work. So that is the situation sir. So this is called as adverse psychological implications on individual worker due to repetitive and non-creative nature of work and add his point to because that is an important point. Okay, so the worker was alienated from the production process. The worker is not was, the worker is alienated from alienated. Alienated means removed. Okay, alienated from production or production process. The worker is alienated from the production process. Okay, 
so and one more outcome of industrial revolution is it led to greedy consumeristic cultures okay so are you understanding this because they are producing more they want people to buy it sir so in order to make people to buy it what they did is they started advertising and with advertising okay all the ills of industrialization they started entering into every house sir samajh mein aaya sir so always a hunger for more material products more clothes okay more machines at your home so all of these things are what they are an outcome of greedy nature in fact industrial revolution it stimulated the greedy nature among the human beings and through advertising they normalized greed sir you understanding normalization of greed okay greed has become so common that if someone questions greed then okay the person is seen as a communist sir okay or he is seen as a sanyasi taken hey, yes or no sir so if someone questions greed then he will become stupid he will become a sanyasi people will start saying that uska to nahi ho pa raha hai to isliye wo aisa bol raha hai okay so that is how the things are working so greedy nature also it led to okay so it changed the character and culture of people in the whole world industrial revolution then along with that okay gandhi was against the missionary sir okay his reasons are primarily the same reasons okay it leads to unemployment mass production destroys creativity there is no psychological satisfaction and it promotes greedy nature among human beings so wahan pe greedy nature pe hi you likh lo consumeristic culture consumeristic culture consumeristic culture consumeristic culture and you also write one statement industrialization led to led to luddite movement luddite l u d t i t e luddite movement where workers deliberately sabotaged missionary sabotage sabotage means deliberate destruction workers sabotaged missionary sabotaged missionary theek hai sir okay kal bhi maine do question diya tha aaj bhi already do question ho gaye na yes so i'll give more questions to just listen to me the next topic so because of the ills of industrial revolution okay so because of the negative consequences of industrial revolution so what happened is there emerged a new ideology it is called as socialism did you understand the link between these topics sir see my course is planned in such a fashion that step by step you will be able to understand and you will be able to appreciate the links between various things sir okay so next topic is socialism and socialism is an ideology so see this sir unlike capitalism socialism capitalism is primarily an economic ideology sir whereas socialism is a politico economic ideology sir it is a politico economic ideology and its economics okay so you have the handout called socialism okay wo nikal lijiye so that is the third not the fourth handout fourth handout is socialism listen to me carefully sir sun lijiye socialism is an ideology okay so if you want to take it out please take it out first then after that listen i will adjust <laughs> that would be better okay rather than mil gaya okay socialism so did you get it now understand this sir so socialism unlike capitalism it is a politico economic ideology sir and this politico economic ideology if you look at the economic part of socialism it tries to say that the means of production in any society they should only be owned by the government and they should be run for the sake of not profit but for the sake of social benefit ye to hum log dekh liya out yes and in order to achieve this economic system in order to achieve an economic system where the means of production are owned by the government and they are run for the welfare of the public so what they do is the socialists take the form of a political movement and the political movement's main demands are one is justice and the second one is equality so social socialism is a politico economic doctrine which tries to promote an economy where the means of production are owned by the government or public and they will be cooperatively managed for the sake of social welfare and in order to achieve this economic system they take the form of a political movement with justice and equality as the core principles bada ho gaya kya definition yes so did you 
try to understand it logically sir so apart from being an economic system it is also a political ideology and the political ideology tries to promote justice and equality and in order to achieve these things we need an economic system where the means of production are owned by the government and the means of production will be worked for the sake of social welfare so much my answer this is the simplest possible definition of socialism most of the socialist ideology it believes in the same concept sir but the thing is in order to because for socialism society and social equality are the most important ideas sir and in order to achieve social equality or justice in society socialism it proposes three different methods sir there are three different methods in order to achieve socialism or in order to achieve social equality and justice there are three different methods sir one method is the first and foremost one is system which is called as voluntary socialism sir okay voluntary socialism is the first system and in this voluntary socialism the capitalists by looking at the condition of the workers okay and the issues they are facing the capitalists should have a change of heart and they should start paying better wages to the workers and they should start improving the conditions of workers by constructing for them houses hospitals so that the workers condition will improve that is the idea of voluntary socialism sir samajh mein aaya aapko in voluntary socialism the main work is done by not the workers sir in voluntary socialism the main change should happen in uh, the minds of we are looking at the harsh conditions of the workers they should change their heart and they have to pay them better wages and they have to give them all possible facilities so that they can live a dignified and decent enough life sir is it clear and in this it focuses only on the capitalists and it asks the capitalists to change their heart okay so try attempting this thing sir at any time okay let's suppose you think that someone is exploited Okay, let's give an example. Let's suppose you are staying in a rented house in Bhuvaneshwar. Okay, rented house में आप रह रहे, okay आपका owner आपसे, okay बहुत ज़्यादा rent ले रहे, आप तो bachelor हैं, bachelor बोल के out पांच हज़ार ज़्यादा लगा दिया आपने. Okay, so usually it is ten thousand, but for, because you are a bachelor, it is fifteen thousand. And you are preparing for UPSC, no income, okay only expenditure. Yes, so this is your situation. Okay, उसका तो क्या है पैसा चाहिए. तो आप उसके पास जाके सर जी ओके आप देख लीजिए मेरा सिचुएशन बहुत कठिन है ओके सो मैं तो दिन रात पढ़ रहा हूँ ओके और उसके साथ साथ में मेरा यूपीएससी का तैयारी भी चल रहा है सो प्लीज आप थोड़ा मान के ओके हमारा रेंट बहुत कम करके मैं तो सात हजार से एक रुपए भी ज्यादा नहीं दे पाऊंगा बोल के आप जाके उससे रिक्वेस्ट कर लीजिए सर नेक्स्ट डे यू कम टू क्लास ओके बाय द टाइम यू गो होम यूर लगेज विल बी ऑन द स्ट्रीट है कि नहीं सर most likely it would be the case will any person who is getting profited from you will he change his heart sir most probably it is not going to happen only some exceptional individuals they might change their heart sir okay just like the tatas you might be knowing about the tatas tatas worker policy is very good sir it is very fair then along with that most of their profits they will give it away for social welfare activities social service ke liye bahut sara uska paisa wo log de denge sir can you see Tell the same thing about the Ambani sir. They will, they will extract okay as much as you can squeeze from a lemon and a little bit more. Okay, that is their idea sir. Okay, उसका पास काम करने के बाद आपको कोई भी अच्छा आदमी लगेगा sir. So that is how they will extract. So it means that only some exceptional capitalists they will believe in the idea of voluntary socialism and they will work for the welfare of the workers sir. That too. if they start working for the welfare of the workers understand this carefully sir automatically their production costs will increase will they not increase sir production cost worker ko aap zyada wage diya to production cost will increase and once the production cost increases the prices of the product also will increase and your product will become uncompetitive in the market yes or no once your product becomes uncompetitive in the market people will not look at whether the production is ethical or unethical sir they will only look at the price of the product and then they will buy sir hey kine okay you go to a supermarket okay you have a product at 150 rupees uh, one more product the same product at 100 rupees sir on the product which is named as 150 rupees it is written that okay in the production of this uh, material we have not the interest of the not hurt the interest of the worker 
we paid them fair wages okay then along with that we also did not affect the environment bolke ye sab likh ke 150 rupees ka price tag laga to aapko kya aayega sir man mein okay wo sab karne se mere ko kya fayda mujhe to 100 rupees mein mil raha hai so i'll buy the product which is at 100 rupees only nowadays a culture is changing somewhat towards organic products some people are buying that to only the rich people which can afford to choose sir poor people they don't have any choice they have to buy the cheapest product only so that way what happens is it will lead to the increase in the production cost too and once the production cost increases automatically the industries which follow this form of voluntary socialism they are going to fail sir. and it is very very clear okay primarily because there was one person in england by the name of robert owens owen industries bolke they had a very big factory textile industry of their own where okay, his father by working very hard okay by exploiting a lot many workers he has established a huge factory aur is aadmi aaya and this person he was having this voluntary socialistic ideology sir so usne kya kiya he started increasing the wages of the workers started paying for the education of the children of workers he started constructing houses for them all of these made woven textiles cost increase substantially sir so by the time of his death he became an absolute pauper his industry was shut down he lost he lost all his money sir are you following this so this is what is called as voluntary socialism and here the most important role is given to okay, so it is also called as an emotional model sir when because of your kind heartedness only you are doing all these things right this is called as emotional socialism voluntary socialism and one more term which is associated with this a is a socialism which is called as utopian socialism okay there are multiple names sir and the same socialism in india it is called as what is it called sir huh? gandhian socialism in india it is called as gandhian socialism sir gandhian socialism is this one that the capitalist should change his heart and he should consider the workers as trusteeship that is what is voluntary socialism every socialist ideology it has its impact on india sir and in india it is called as gandhian socialist model then apart from gandhian socialism the second kind of socialism is a kind of socialism which is called as scientific socialism this scientific socialism also has one more name to it which is called as marxian socialism sir. and this socialism it believes that okay the in fact voluntary socialism can never become successful they strongly believe that this is not going to be successful because maybe out of 10000 industrialists one industrialist might change but the rest of them will keep continuing the exploitation of the workers so that is the reason why the best recourse for to answer this exploitation is that the workers should first unionize they should create a trade union then after creating the trade union what they have to do is they in large number should conduct a strike and at the end of the strike they should kill the capitalist understand this okay at the end of the strike anyhow his heart is not changing so what we will do is we will kill him. make his heart stop working sir <laughs> simple okay kaise bhi wo sudhar nahi rahe to maar lijiye usko okay and after killing him what you are going to do is you are going to submit the industry's control to the government and the government is going to manage the industry and after managing the industry in this management the government will in fact take care of the welfare of the workers this model which promotes a enmity between the worker and the capitalist which calls for the killing of the capitalist is called as okay scientific socialism or marxian socialism this is in fact a very very violent form of socialism sir this is violent socialism and this socialism calls for an end to the capitalist and redistributing the property or giving the control of the property to the government and the government will manage the industry and work for the workers welfare sir in india do we have this kind of socialism sir huh? where this marxian socialism who follows this naxals okay cpi maoist party it follows this marxian socialism then apart from this marxian socialism there is a third kind of socialism sir which is called as okay so the last socialism sir it has two names to it one is fabian socialism or it is also called as democratic socialism and this socialism is very unique 
primarily because it gives a lot of primacy to democracy. And this socialism is also against violence. It is all form against all form of violence. But what it does is, it does a very clear cut class analysis of the society. And according to the class analysis, in any society, the majority of the population will always be lower class. Yes or no? Okay, in any society, usually the majority of the population would be lower class. And when the majority of the population are lower class, in a democratic election, if the lower classes are very conscious about their rights, in democratic election, the leaders of the lower class, they will be elected to power. Take an answer. Yes. So, if the lower classes understand their situation properly, they will elect their own leader to power. And once they elect their leader to power, this leader who is in power, he will use the political power in order to reduce the influence of capitalists. Are you following this? And he will make legislations like minimum wage. He will put in industrial regulation. And finally, he will create a situation where the capitalists themselves voluntarily surrender their industries to the government. There is no need to kill the capitalist. Just elect your own representative as the leader of the country because you are in majority. And after electing him, he will take care of your situation. You don't you have to vote for the leader who is a representative of the lower class interest is the idea. Are you following this? And this socialism is called as Fabian socialism or democratic socialism. And it believes in the concept of gradual change rather than quick change. Sir. Gradual change rather than quick change. And can you name any socialist in India who believed in this idea, sir? Huh? Ambedkar? No. Trades. This ideology is nothing but, in India it is called as Nehruvian Socialism. Is it not Nehruvian Socialism? Yes, using democracy for the sake of implementing socialism is Nehruvian Socialism, sir. Are you understanding this? So, this is Nehruvian Socialism in India and this says that just implement democracy. By implementing democracy, you will be able to achieve socialism. Following this? And in UK, there was a party which is called as Labour Party. Sir. Okay, now it has become insignificant in front of the conservatives. But Labour Party is a political party of okay, this ideology of Fabian Socialism. Nehruvian Socialism is also the same ideology. Sir. It believes that lower classes are anyhow in majority. No need to fight, just vote. Okay, and by voting, elect your socialist representatives to the government. And they will take care and they will regulate capitalism. And finally, they will work for workers' welfare is the idea of Fabian Socialism. Okay, Pele, first one is just plead to the capitalist, please change your heart. Second one is kill the capitalist. Third one is capture political power and through political power regulate capitalists and make him work for the welfare of the people. Sir. These are the three different forms of socialism, sir. Okay. Now, after looking at the three different forms of socialism, let us try to understand the evolution of socialism. Sir. Understand this carefully. So, evolution of socialism and in fact, most of the socialist ideas are primarily part of all the religions of the world. Sir. Is it not true? Most of the religions of the world, what they try to promote? sir? They try to promote social welfare. Religions also try to preach the rich responsibility to the poor people. Every religion gives utmost significance to Dan. Dan is what? If you are prosperous, if you have money, you have to work for the welfare of the society by giving donations to people. In every religion, helping the poor people, helping the okay, old people, helping okay, orphans, all of them are considered to be issues of religious merit in every religion across the region across the world. Yes. So, the earliest form of socialism is always found in uh, all the religions of the world. Most of the religions of the world, they always promote compassion of the rich people towards the poor. So, the earliest socialist ideas are originally found in religion, sir. But for the first time, an organized form of socialist ideology, it is proposed by this Greek thinker by the name of Plato, sir. Here, Plato, he in fact, created an ideal world of his own, which is called as a republic, sir. And in this republic of Plato, what he said is, 
okay all the assets of the community should be owned collectively by people there should not be any private ownership and during that greek time even women are also considered as assets of the societies so that is the reason why he says that there should not be any marriage okay women and children are also common assets of the entire society is the his ideas he was against family system this way ye aadmi bahut jyada socialist ban gaye sir he is not just about possession of things or land property aisa nahi hai sir even women are also considered as property and he said that women also should be collectively owned by the entire society he to he tells one hostels concept <laughs> स्टेट्स नर्सरीज एंड स्टेट्स हॉस्टल्स की प्रपोजेस एंड थ्रू दैट इट इज पॉसिबल बोल के उसने कुछ बोला सर बट लकीली नो वन इम्प्लीमेंटेड इट टिल नाउ सो नो वन इम्प्लीमेंटेड इट टिल नाउ सो बट ही आइडियलिज्म हाईली आइडियलिस्टिक स्टेट ही प्रपोजेस वन सर देन उसके बाद में द सेम सोशलिस्ट आइडियोलॉजी इट केम टू द फोर फ्रंट वंस मोर ड्यूरिंग एनलाइटनमेंट थ्रू रूसो रूसो टॉक अबाउट सोशलिज्म यू रिमेंबर सर ही टॉक अबाउट आर्टिफिशियल नेचुरल इनिक्वालिटीज said that property is the original cause of all problems in society bola ki nahi sir usne he said that man is bo born free but everywhere he is in chains usne bola ki society mein theek nahi chal raha hai and he wanted society to go back to tribal social format and a tribal social format is always socialist society samajh mein aaya aapko so this way rousseau is the second prominent socialist sir then after rousseau the third stream of socialism it is the same voluntary socialism that i have talked about earlier which is called as utopian socialism sir okay, here what is the meaning of utopia you ever heard this term imaginary. it is a imaginary perfect place sir okay utopia is an ima imaginary perfect place and in this imaginary perfect place there is no social inequality there is freedom for everyone so this is what is called as utopia sir it is a highly idealistic world and utopian socialism it wants to create this kind of idealistic world but the method that they propose is that what do they propose sir voluntary change of the capitalist heart here yeah, voluntary change of capitalist heart is something that they propose and they say that okay only through emotional pleading then apart from emotional pleading okay we should promote have you have ever heard this term philanthropy Okay, philanthropy means what the capitalists and the rich people they call voluntary contribute their money for the sake of poor social welfare okay that is what is called as philanthropy so we have seen some exceptional philanthropists in india narayan murthy is one he gives a lot of wealth azim premji is one prominent one he gave away 99% of his wealth for social welfare sir azim premji ratan tata is one more yes so these are the people who follow this system sir and the indian government is trying to promote this through a system called corporate social responsibility you ever heard that csr okay so corporates are responsible for society they have to spend at least part of their wealth for the sake of social welfare already they are paying tax but apart from tax also you have to work for social welfare bolke so that is what is called as voluntary socialism sir is it clear so voluntary socialism promote kiya so then after voluntary socialism the next and most important ideology which in fact not only had an effect on socialism sir but this theory which i am proposing next it has effect on every humanity subject across the world sir every humanity subject mein there was impact and this ideology is called as marxian socialism or revolutionary socialism which is also called as scientific socialism and the ideas which were discussed by karl marx as part of his theory they had impact on every possible humanities discipline sir every possible humanities discipline pe iska haath to rahega hi rahega sir you take the subjects like even your state odia literature odia literature may be there will be some revolutionary writers revolutionary writers are all inspired by revolutionary socialism sir so this way without marx you cannot prepare for upsc sir okay his shadow is present in every discipline so let's try to understand what his shadow is all about what did he write where was he from what is his story let's try to understand sir so this person karl marx is originally a german jew okay german jew usually the jews are a very prosperous community sir majority of them are industrialists majority of them are capitalist traders so they are in a very prosperous situation sir but even though he belonged to okay ideally he belonged to the 
middle class sir but his life throughout his life he worked for the betterment of the lower classes of society are you following this then during his lifetime what he did is he published two documents sir one is called as the famous communist manifesto okay and the second one is das kapital okay two books he has published and his communist manifesto was published in the year 1848 and later he published after his death i think das kapital was published sir. so these are the two books that he has published so theek hai okay sab sahi hai to usne kya hi bola okay why his theory became so prominent let's try to understand sir okay first and foremost what he said is because one term of karl marx that is communism is part of our syllabus sir. so let's try to understand him a little more clearly sir first and foremost what he does is he is the one who started conducting a class analysis of society sir you remember that upper class middle class lower class division in society so that was first okay very clearly defined and understood by karl marx sir. so pehle class analysis ke bare mein bola okay how different classes are present usne bola sir then uske sath sath mein the second thing that he proposed is an idea which is called as economic determinism sir okay and according to him okay any person's life experience will always be dependent upon his economic status sir usne sahi sahi tik tik bola ki so in life the most important thing is econ you need not study about the society or polity you just tell me the economic situation based on that i will automatically make an analysis of the political and social setup which will automatically be correct sir. this is called as economic determinism economic determinism means it applies both for okay the societies and individuals sir at an individual level okay your economic status at birth it will determine most of your life sir except for some exceptional situations most of the times the economic situations that you are born in they will determine most of your life except for some rare circumstances sir are you following this okay if you are born into utter poverty there is high possibility for you to die in utter poverty only sir are you following this so this is something which he says that economic determinism then uske sath mein usne bola ki this is same idea it also applies to societies he says that in in any society there is industrialized private sector owned industrialized economy is there let's suppose in any society which has privatized private sector led industrialized economy automatically the governance format in the society would be democracy understand this carefully sir then he says that in any society where the economic system is based on feudalism okay wherever there is feudalism there will automatically be the political system of absolute monarchy is his statement sir aapko samajh mein aa raha hai sir yes so he says that based on the economic system itself the political system will be based economic system agar feudalism hai to absolute monarchy rahega agar if the economic situation is okay industrialized economy private sector wala then automatically there will be the political system of democracy are you following this yes so this was his statement sir so usne economic determinism ke bare mein bola then uske baad the next thing that he said is so in any society okay understand this carefully sir the people who control the means of production okay the people who control the means of production they will be the people okay so who are considered as the haves in society sir. okay bourgeois or sometimes upper classes also can control means of production i'll talk about that okay any person who controls the means of production is called as have sir and the people who work on these means, means of production who depend on the means of production for their livelihood uh, they are called as the hamlets just think of it like a zamindar and a tenant farmer sir zamindar is the owner of the land means of production then the tenant farmer is dependent on the zamindar right so he divides the society into haves and hamlets and he says that throughout history the means of production was never owned fairly sir in a fair fashion no one has owned the means of production in every means of production he says that okay throughout history the haves have always exploited the have nots understand this carefully the haves have always exploited the have nots and this has been the case throughout history bolke isne ek theory bola sir then in order to prove that how the haves have have exploited the have nots he proposed two ideas sir one is called as 
the dialectical materialism the second one is called as historical materialism don't get scared by the word sir just listen to me everything is present in the handout just sunli one theory that he proposes is dialectical materialism in order to explain the conflict between haves and have nots second theory is historical materialism sir in this dialectical materialism he says that in any society okay dialect means always a discussion sir dialect means discussion and this dialectical materialism is nothing but there will always be okay conflict between the poorer sections of the society and the richer sections of the society that is what he states sir okay the same thing have and have not beech mein conflict hoga to wahi cheez yahan pe bhi bol raha hai ki dialectical materialism mein in any society the poor will have always conflict with the rich primarily because the rich will become rich by exploiting the poor sir usne ye cheez bola then uske baad mein in order to prove that in throughout history it was the same situation okay to kaise aap kaise prove karenge ki rich and poor always lad rahe bol ke kisne pucha usko then usne kya kiya he created a chart for history sir and in this chart for history that he created understand this sir the first human condition is called as primitive communism sir in primitive communism the society is present in tribal format and in this society of tribal format the means of production the okay, means of production are what sir hunting and gathering is the activity of people at that point of time sir in hunting and gathering will there be any means of production sir will there be any means of production uh, tools something is there but everyone can own them there is no exploitation in the system hunting and gathering is a situation where the means of production are collectively owned by the entire society and there will be no haves and have nots in this society sir and from this primitive communism what happened is the next stage of human society is called as the master slave model sir next section of human society is called as master slave model and in this master slave model the means of production in society is nothing but labor sir understand this carefully okay in the earliest forms of human societies land was in surplus with everyone samajh mein aa raha hai sir aapko kabhi ab tab when land was in surplus is land ownership important sir any person can claim any amount of land but the most important asset in society was labor so that is the reason why in master slave model the master owns the labor of the slaves and through his ownership over the person and his labor he will start exploiting the slaves and this exploitation it continued during most of ancient times so most of ancient time may this exploitation it has continued he says this then after this master exploited the slaves thoroughly the slaves at one point of time all of them united they revolted against the master and they said that we don't want to be your slaves in him is it clear they killed their masters okay sometimes they overthrew the masters and they became free people sir once they became free people the next stage of okay history is this system which is called as feudalism now the population has increased productive land is limited so kya hua now the most important means of production is nothing but land and the person who owns the land he will become the have and the person who works on land he will become the have so in feudal system if you remember i told about these serfs right they are semi slaves okay they are controlled by the feudal lord primarily through his ownership of land sir kya dekhi nahi aapko yes and finally all these serfs together they were able to overthrow the feudal lords right when did they overthrow sir what event led to the overthrow of the feudal lords by the serfs when did the farmers revolt against the feudal lords did we discuss that event by any chance not in not in india sir west may french revolution french revolution is the event when the serfs all of them together they overthrew the feudal lords through this event which is called as french revolution he says this sir french revolution is the event where the serfs have overthrown the masters who are called as feudal lords are you following this then he says that the period when okay the feudal lords were exploiting the serfs there was a lot of conflict between them and this conflict he calls as class wars sir because the feudal lords all of them they belong to the upper class 
whereas the serfs they belong to the lower class he calls this as class war sir and finally a revolution ended this class war by overthrowing the feudal lords and giving the land to the serfs hey you work in a sir french revolution yes now after this french revolution everyone thought that okay in society land will be collectively owned there will not be any haves and have nots but the problem is post the french revolution what happened is big okay parallel to the french revolution and post french revolution we had the industrial revolution and in industrial revolution what happened is okay the middle classes they started becoming immensely prosperous because of their control over the industry and now the people who they are exploiting are this section of population who belong to the lower classes they were called as workers workers are being exploited the middle classes are getting benefited and because of this in industrial revolution time to the workers have created numerous trade unions of their own okay and the workers and the owners of the industry the middle classes who are also called as capitalists they will always be in conflict with each other workers always demand higher wage and at the same time the capitalists are not ready to give higher wage because their profit comes out of higher wage only hey can i sir then along with that the profit which the capitalist takes it is in fact the unpaid salary of the laborer you remember labor theory of value sir yes then along with that because the capitalist is not paying proper wages to the worker the capitalist economy always faces as crises you remember the economic cycle sir workers are being paid low wage low wage led to absence of buying capability of the goods and when the goods are not bought more unemployment happens this will lead to a negative cycle right h is b karl marx ne hi bola tha sir capitalism ka criticism so he talked about these things so he said that okay labor theory of value is there then along with that economic cycles of capitalism always okay lead to a boom bust cycle sir the statement is this there is a bust for every boom there will be a bust so this way there will be always be crises in this industrialized economy primarily because of the conflict between the workers and the middle class members and what he says is till now whatever happened in past i have said but now i am going to tell the future for you this is the statement of karl marx he said that till here i have told about what happened in the past just like the slaves of earlier period just like the serfs of the earlier period the workers are also going to unite and by uniting what these people are going to do is they are going to overthrow the middle class and this revolution he calls as the socialist revolution and he says that in future this is going to happen okay i am not going to cause it but i am sure that because of the working of the economic system this event is going to happen and my role is not about my role is not in okay bringing about the revolution what i am saying is i am making the workers understand that in future they have to revolt against the capitalists he says that his role is the role of mid midwife he says that socialism is any going anyhow going to happen his work is what he is just delivering socialism more comfortably sir that's it that is what midwives do, do right okay they help in delivering of baby he says that my role is midwife in socialism anyhow socialism is going to happen my role is the role of a midwife and the socialist revolution will happen and once the socialist revolution happens there will be dictatorship of working class in the world okay is nabola sir next stage of economic process is dictatorship of, of workers and in this dictatorship of workers what will happen is all the means of production they will be owned by the governments samajh mein aaya aapko yes so means of production will be owned by the government and the workers will be okay the same people who will work but he says that even this system is not going to survive understand this carefully sir even this system is not going to survive because in this system okay so there is one problem that the government which controls the means of production okay they are going to exploit the workers sir okay government means automatically whom sir civil servants yes okay in this situation also again civil servants will exploit the workers so that is the reason why this system is also not going to survive and he says that at the end of this system there will be a revolution which is called as communist revolution sir and this communist revolution what it leads to is it leads to complete destruction of government sun lijiye sir kitna acha theory bola isne it will lead to destruction of government 
तो सबने पूछा सर गवर्नमेंट अगर डिस्ट्रॉय हो गए तो क्या सर हाउ विल द सोसाइटी सर्वाइव विद आउट गवर्नमेंट इज द क्वेश्चन देन कार्ल मार्क्स प्रपोज दैट वेन द गवर्नमेंट इज डिस्ट्रॉयड वॉट एफ इज वी विल एस्टैब्लिश ए सिस्टम विच इज कॉल्ड एस कम्युनिज्म और कम्युनिस्ट सिचुएशन और कम्युनिस्ट कम्युनिज्म वी आर गोइंग टू क्रिएट सर एंड इन दिस कम्युनिज्म फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट के दिस इज ए स्टेटलेस सोसाइटी सर स्टेटलेस मीन्स वॉट विदाउट गवर्नमेंट This has been asked as a UPSC prelims question, sir. You will be surprised to know they will they asked a question comparing Gandhi with Karl Marx. Okay, 2018 का question है उसमें यही चीज पूछा गया सर. Gandhi and Marx both of them agree that finally we have to move to stateless society, sir. क्योंकि Gandhi को भी state से बहुत नफरत था. तो उसके बारे में बाद में बात करेंगे हम लोग Gandhi को discuss करने के time पे. So similarly, this person also talked about stateless society. And in communism, he believes that. This is a kind of system where the means of production are owned by the entire society, not by the government. Sir. In socialism, okay, the government will own the means of production. In communism, the means of production are owned by the entire society. And he says that this society will work on the principle that, okay, to each according to his work, sorry, sorry to each according to his needs, sir. and from each according to his capability. Can I tell about this by any chance here in class? Why I don't know? I think I told this. So to each according to his need and from each according to his capability. This is his idea, sir. It means that everyone will voluntarily work for the society, and at the same time, okay, for whatever needs of the people are there, the society is going to take care of them. This is the ultimate paradise for Karl Marx, sir. and he says that in this communism. Again, the same idea of primitive communism is going to be established. Right? So, he started with primitive communism. Te. So, finally, the end stage is also communism. Stateless society. Means of production are collectively owned by the society. To each according to his need and from each according to his capability is the idea that Karl Marx proposes. Sir. And, in fact, he also states that Karl Marx, he was, he was a kind of person who understood very well that in any society, Okay, the people who are haves, they always want to control the means of production, sir. Understand this. And in order to control the means of production, they will use violence. Okay, if they let's suppose if the lower classes or if the have nots, if they want control over means of production, they will not try to give it, sir. They will use violence. But before using violence, they use many other tools in order to fool the people, sir. In order to fool the people and in order to make them work for, okay, they have they will use many tools. Of these tools, okay, the best tool which has been used by the upper classes is religion. Hmm. So he, that is was his statement. He made a statement saying that religion is the opium of masses. Religion, in fact, is like a drug, sir. Okay, what it does is when the people are being exploited in this world, it will say to them that you work hard now. You will get paradise in the afterlife. So much may I have? Yes. So it will give psychological justification for exploitation. Okay, can I, sir? Christianity famously said that blessed are the weak people because they will be lesser sinners. The rich people are bigger sinners. So what happens? Okay, let them exploit. Let me be weak only because that is considered as good thing in Christianity. That is the reason why for feudals. For feudal society in Europe, Catholic faith is a very good faith, sir. Because in Catholic faith, the weak people are considered to be achieving paradise in afterlife. So you suffer now, so at least in the afterlife you will have paradise. So it is in fact making the people submissive to the exploitation. Take it, sir. Understand me, sir? So religion is considered to be the opium of masses, sir. So similarly, the Varna system in India is also like opium for masses. नहीं सर कोई सोसाइटी में आपको कुछ क्वेश्चन पूछना नहीं आपका जात के हिसाब से आपको काम करना पड़ेगा आप क्यों ये काम कर रहे हैं आपका जात हुई है किसने बोला भगवान ने बोला कहा बोला वेदास में बोला ओके खत्म ओके सो दैट इज रीजन वाई ही सेज दट रिलीजन इज द ओपियम ऑफ मासिस एंड ही ऑल्सो आइडेंटिफाइज ए सेकेंड ओके डिस्ट्रैक्टिव एलिमेंट फॉर द मासिस सर एंड द सेकेंड डिस्ट्रैक्टिव एलिमेंट फॉर द मासिस इज The concept of nationalism. 
Understand this carefully. Karl Marx is dead against nationalism as a concept, sir. Because he believed that the lower classes of, okay, I am just giving an example. Is there any difference between the lower classes of India and Pakistan, sir? What? They are more, we are less. Okay, that is a different case. <laughs> In number, definitely I agree, sir. But uh, we have roti, they don't have roti. <laughs> okay. TK, like in Firvi, just one thing you need to understand, sir. The situation or the economic position of lower class in any part of the world is almost similar, sir. They have the same problems, they face the same issues. Okay, so and they their aspirations are also very similar, sir. Lower class across the world they have similar aspiration. But what happens is the capitalists and the owners of industry in order to maintain their control over the lower classes what they will do is they will try to promote conflict between different nations by using the idea of nationalism sir and by using nationalism if a war is promoted who will be the casualties sir mainly lower classes will be the foot soldiers of any army will be coming from lower class only dekh lijiye sir aap koi bhi jawan ko jaake pooch lijiye अगर उसके पास 30-40 एकड़ का लैंड है तो वो जवान कभी नहीं बनेगा सर ओके मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स दे आर फ्रॉम वेरी हम्बल सोशो इकोनॉमिक बैकग्राउंड मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स ओके आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट ऑल केसेस समटाइम्स व्हाट हैपेंस इज सम रिच पीपल आल्सो बिकॉज़ ऑफ नेशनलिज्म दे विल गो बट इन मेजॉरिटी ऑफ द केसेस दे विल बी फ्रॉम वेरी हम्बल बैकग्राउंड सर हां वेरी लेस फ्रॉम गुजरात फ्रॉम साउथ इंडिया आल्सो देयर आर सब्स्टैंशियली लेस सर ओके गुजरात में तो आर्मी आप 10 15 विलेज भी जाओ आपको एक भी सोल्जर नहीं मिलेगा तो सेम केस इफ यू गो टू यूपी एंड बिहार फॉर एवरी विलेज यू विल फाइंड थर्टी पीपल सर क्यों ओके क्योंकि मेनली द सोल्जर्स आर ऑल लोअर क्लासेस एंड नेशनलिज्म इज ए वेरी इफेक्टिव टूल इन ऑर्डर टू फूल द लोअर क्लासेस एंड मेक देम फॉरगेट हु देर रियल एनमी सर द रियल एनमी ऑफ लोअर क्लास इज ऑलवेज द हैव सर बट नेशनलिज्म इज ए वेरी इफेक्टिव टूल इन ऑर्डर टू फूल द लोअर क्लासेस and make them believe that the enemy is in pakistan are you following this so in order to maintain the society this kind of lies are being propagated bolke isne religion or nationalism ke against bahut zyada baat kiya sir he <laughs> he told so many things against religion and nationalism if you read marx you will start doubting these things sir whether he is correct or not okay so he was definitely correct he was able to see okay at least the truth in a particular way sir one perspective of truth he was able to cap capture and grasp and that is this he says religion nationalism all of these things are opium of masses you have to reject them the only enemy for the lower classes is the people who are owning the means of production go and hit them kill them take over the control and give it to government and after government takes over control then next stage mein what happens is the workers will not be satisfied with government interference that is civil services fir baad mein usko bhi maro तो उसके बाद जाके आप ओके सो कम्युनिस्ट स्टेट एस्टैब्लिश करो बिकॉज द टर्म्स सोशलिज्म एंड कम्युनिज्म आर मेंशन इन योर सिलेबस सेपरेटली सर एंड टिल नाउ इन नो कंट्री इन द वर्ल्ड इवन दो द नेम देम सेल्स एज कम्युनिस्ट देर इज कम्युनिज्म एस्टैब्लिश वी वर एबल टू ओनली गो टिल सोशलिज्म ओके सो वी वर एबल टू ओनली गो टिल सोशलिज्म बट दे कॉल देम सेल्स एज कम्युनिस्ट कंट्रीज सर so take the case of china it is called as communist party of china communist party of russia okay they are called communist because their ultimate aim is communism but they are present at the state of socialism in the world the russian revolution chinese revolution both of them were able to create socialist states but not communist states sir communism is the ultimate end and that has never been achieved the following this so this is the ideology of karl marx sir so shall we read through this or shall we discuss about the limitations of this model to sir limitations let we shall we discuss okay see you try to tell me sir okay so i'll just give you one example see socialism tries to promote equality sir yes or no it says that society should be equal but when they told about equality everyone believed that okay there will be equality wherein the poor people will become like rich people sir they expected this okay social equality un log bol raha hai ki bol raha hai social equality ke liye lad raha hai so everyone expected that it is to improve the condition of the poor people and to make them equal to the rich people and the society will be equal sir but what socialism practically achieved is 
it was able to convert the rich people into poor people and they established the equality in poverty sir sabne socha ki equality equality bol rahe hai to theek hai okay hum log ladenge sab socha ki hamara life improve hoga hum log bhi rich people ke okay so almost equal position mein hum log aayenge everyone expected this and started supporting socialism wearing red shirt okay red flag they started catching and they started fighting but finally what they were able to achieve is they were able to convert the rich people into poor people and they established the equality in poverty sir <laughs> kyunki see they were able to achieve socialism and in socialism always there will be civil servants and if civil, civil servants are there in any equation then automatically what will happen is okay so there will be some compromise okay don't take me wrongly but that is the reality are you following this so they expect that the poor will become rich but the rich became poor and they were able to establish equality in poverty for everyone sir so sab log equally poor hai to no jealousy humne <laughs> equality bola aapko bola ki aap log rich honge nahi hum log sirf bola ki equality achieve karenge kar liya humne okay is equality mein kya hai rich people bhi poor hai poor people bhi poor hai sab poor hai sab barabar okay there is no question <laughs> so that is what they were able to achieve this was one major limitation of socialism sir then the second limitation of socialism is okay socialism tries to give the control of the economy to the government right but governments are most of the times infamously okay so infamously known for inefficiency in learning the running the industry sir whenever okay there is no profit motive ओके okay, आपका कुछ नहीं जाएगा वो इंडस्ट्री चलेगा नहीं चलेगा आपका सैलरी तो आपको मिलते रहेगा अगर वो बहुत अच्छा काम किया तो भी आपको प्रॉफिट नहीं मिलेगा और आपको वो घटने से भी आपको कुछ फायदा नहीं होगा सो व्हाट यू ट्राई टू डू मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स द सिविल सर्वेंट्स विल बी इनफिशियंट हैंडलर्स ऑफ इंडस्ट्रीज सर द सेकेंड प्रॉब्लम इज वेन द गवर्नमेंट टू कोवर इंडस्ट्री देर इमर्ज ए लॉट ऑफ एलिमेंट ऑफ इनफिशियंसी सर करप्शन केम इन पिक्चर इनफिशियंसी केम इन पिक्चर and because of this corruption and inefficiency is the government owned industries they were not able to produce the goods equivalent to the private sector are you following this then along with that whenever everything is owned by the government in socialism what happens is will the people have an incentive for innovation sir ab agar aap innovate karke ek badhiya se badhiya technology develop kiya ye wo badhiya se badhiya technology develop karne ke baad the government will take over the entire technology you will not have anything to aapko innovate karne ka, ke liye koi incentive rahega sir नहीं अगर आप काम किए ना किए कम किए ज्यादा किए आपका सैलरी तो एक ही रहेगा आर यू फॉलोइंग दिस सो व्हेन देर इज नो इंसेंटिव ओके टू वर्क हार्ड व्हाट हैपेंस इज इन सोशलिज्म लेजीनेस बिकेम द मेन एनिमी फॉर द गवर्नमेंट एक आदमी ठीक से काम किया तो सौ गुड्स प्रोड्यूस कर सकते एक दिन में लेट सपोज देन इन सोशलिज्म वॉट हैपन इज द वर्कर्स स्टार्टेड डेलीबरेटली प्रोड्यूसिंग थर्टी गुड्स फिफ्टी गुड्स because anyhow even by producing 100 goods also they will not able to get any incentive okay so it will not help their families are you getting what i'm trying to say so this way absence of incentive it led to laziness problem no innovation industry started running inefficiently in socialism sir socialism is an ideology which is very suitable for gods but not for human beings sir because no person can work by completely suppressing his own self interest sir this is not possible if someone works then i will say that he is god definitely okay this is a system which works very well for gods primarily because no person will be working for this entire social welfare neglecting their own family welfare koi kar sakta hai sir kya okay aapka aapko to bahut acha kaam karenge to usse society ko bahut zyada fayda hoga lekin aap mera bole to so wo log bolenge ki aapka koi fayda nahi hoga isme so then automatically you will start thinking ओके सो अगर मेरा फायदा नहीं है तो मैं इतना काम क्यों करूं ओके सो इतना काम करके मेरा क्या फायदा है ओके सो कोई सोसाइटी को फायदा हो रहा है बोल रहे हैं कि सोसाइटी में बहुत लोग हैं वो लोग को काम करने दो ओके मुझे क्यों करना है बोल के सो दिस काइंड ऑफ माइंड सेट इट विल कम इनटू यू सी कैपिटलिज्म एंड एडम स्मिथ दे अंडरस्टूड द ह्यूमन नेचर वेरी वेल सर सोशलिज्म मिसकैलकुलेटेड ह्यूमन नेचर दे थॉट दैट पीपल शुड इफ दे आर गिवन इंसेंटिव और इफ दे आर गिवन इनिशिएशन पीपल विल बी रेडी टू वर्क फॉर द एंटायर सोसाइटी but that can be done only by the exceptional individuals not by the normal people sir maybe a swami vivekananda can work for society okay maybe a mahatma gandhi can work for society they also struggled a lot of times with self interest sir 
क्या हमको क्या क्या हमारा तो बहुत नीचे है तो हमको तो सेल्फ इंटरेस्ट के बिना काम करने का कोई मन नहीं करेगा सर फिर इज सेकेंड थर्ड प्रॉब्लम देन अलॉन्ग विद सोशलिज्म सेट दैट इन द थर्ड स्टेट देर विल बी ए डिक्टेटरशिप ऑफ द प्रोलिटेरियट राइट दैट इज वर्कर्स But what happened is in most of the cases it became the dictatorship of the government rather than workers, sir. And the civil servants became immensely powerful in every socialist country, sir. Just like Indira Gandhi's civil servants in India, they became immensely powerful. They started controlling every walk of life. Then, when people's self-interest is suppressed, what happens is people will start protesting against the government, sir, in numerous forms. Yeah, they will start protesting against the government. and when these protests emerge it will lead to undermining of the socialist ideology and in order to protect the ideology the government started brutally suppressing all the people who question the socialist ideology sir aap question kar rahe hai ye theek nahi chal raha hai kya ho raha hai yahan pe okay self interest mera nahi hai okay immediately a gun will come and it will shoot you sir so practically socialism led to the establishment of a dictatorship under a totalitarian state aapko samajh mein aaya sir then along with that socialism takes a very narrow understanding of human nature sir will man work only for the sake of economic interest sir economic determinism as an idea itself has flaws sir because there are many cases where people work for social respect where people work for okay their own self actualization ke liye bhi kuch log kaam karte sabhi sab jagah paise ke mamla hi nahi hoga na sir so wo tha and they also they failed they did not understand the human nature properly so there is one more thing then apart from economic determinism one more major flaw with the socialism is the, how the transition from socialism to communism is going to happen he never explained it sir he never explained it he said that maybe in future the workers might revolt against the government i don't know but somehow the stateless society is going to be created bolke usne bola sir ye bhi problem tha samajh mein aa raha hai sir aapko so this way socialism had numerous economic and political and social problems of its own primarily because it is an ideology which is based on a very very narrow understanding of human nature sir samajh mein aa raha hai aapko so that is the reason why the naxals also face a lot many problems after joining into the naxal ranks pehle ideology ke mamle mein theek hai sabka equality hai wo bolke sab log jayenge andar andar jaane ke baad many of the naxals they are becoming criminals you know about this right Many of them are criminals. Okay, they are what doing extortion, they are smuggling, they are working for their own self-interest, but they are just using the ideology of socialism in order to protect themselves. समझ में आया सर आपको? Yes, so shall we have a look at the handout? We'll read the handout through. Yes, just see the handout, sir. This is very very important topic. Okay, socialism वाला. Okay, so I'll dictate one question at the end of this topic, sir. Just have a look at the handout. Okay, socialism is a okay, politico-economic doctrine. It is changed, sir. It's not socio-economic. It is politico-economic doctrine. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Please, 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 please. Don't, don't, don't. I'm sorry. Okay, it's given separately, sir. It is a socio-economic doctrine which calls for public ownership of means of production and their cooperative management. To achieve, it takes the form of a political movement with justice and equality as its principles. Clear? It is given there, sir. so it is a socio economic doctrine which calls for public ownership of means of production and their cooperative management to achieve it takes the form of a political movement with justice and equality as its principles clear so the short definition of socialism you have to remember as is sir okay so then next one is it promotes the idea of modes of production be publicly owned and cooperatively management managed for the benefit of all they say that modes of production should not concentrate in few hands and uh, they should not lead to exploitation and it proposes a revolution against capitalists it becomes marxian socialism voluntary change in the heart of capitalists then it becomes utopian socialism then by rule of state over capitalist then it is called as fabian socialism sir there itself you write marxian socialism or revolutionary socialism or scientific socialism three names are there sir for this scientific socialism revolutionary socialism or marxian socialism then second one this utopian socialism is there right okay so there itself if you want to you can add the name of naxalism to sir okay naxalism is also a form of revolutionary socialism then second line mein a utopian hai na uske bagal mein likh lijiye voluntary voluntary socialism 
और इमोशनल सोशलिज्म इमोशनल सोशलिज्म और गांधीयन सोशलिज्म और गांधीयन सोशलिज्म देन द नेक्स्ट वन इज बाय रूल ऑफ स्टेट और कैपिटलिस्ट बोला था ना फेबियन सोशलिज्म उसके बगल में डेमोक्रेटिक सोशलिज्म डेमोक्रेटिक सोशलिज्म और नेहरूवियन सोशलिज्म सर इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एस नेहरूवियन सोशलिज्म वर्किंग क्लास मिडिल क्लास एंड अपर क्लास सर मैंने इसके बारे में ऑलरेडी बात किया आपको डिक्टेट भी किया सर द सेम थिंग्स ओके हुआ मिडिल क्लास अपर क्लास दैट इज क्लास एनालिसिस ऑफ सोसाइटी सो देन आफ्टर दैट एवोल्यूशन ऑफ सोशलिज्म यू सी सर प्लेटो इज द फर्स्ट टू पुट फॉरवर्ड द आइडिया ऑफ सोशलिज्म इन एंशियंट ग्रीस बिफोर दैट इट सेल्फ यू राइट वन स्टेटमेंट मोस्ट ऑफ द रिलीजन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड मोस्ट ऑफ द रिलीजन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड मोस्ट ऑफ द रिलीजन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड also promote also promote socialism also promote socialism also promote socialism then after that plato first to put forward the idea of socialism in ancient greece he said that productive resources should be collectively owned and there should be no form of private ownership every individual is free in his republic republic is the ideal state that he creates sir so we highlight that word republic you write ideal state then second one is rousseau he proposes this romantic philosophy that man should go back to the tribal social format he promotes the idea of equality of individual and he says that even though man men are born free everywhere they are in chains then the next one is utopian socialism utopia means perfect place it believes in the concept of voluntarism yes voluntarism it believes in change of society should be by philanthropy that is voluntary change no state role okay so and their aim is to set up economic models based on cooperatives samajh mein aaya aapko yes cooperatives lex exploitation because there will be no capitalist ownership in uh, this uh, uh, trusteeship model sir okay so there you write one statement the owner of means of production the owner of means of production should the owner of means of production means of production should consider himself as should consider should consider himself as a trustee should consider himself as trustee okay trustee means what sir which organizations will have trustees usually cooperatives ngos ngos also have trustees right so these are the people who will manage the assets of the ngo for the sake of social welfare sir समझ में आ रहा है सर सो कैपिटल शुड कंसिडर दमसेल्स एज ट्रस्टीज जस्ट लाइक द ओनर्स ऑफ एनजीओ दे शुड कंसिडर दमसेल्स एंड दे शुड ओके वर्क फॉर द सेक ऑफ द वेलफेयर ऑफ द वर्कर्स इज देयर आइडिया सर दिस इज द आइडिया ऑफ गांधी जी टू सर इट इज अमोशनल मॉडल विच इज बेस्ड ऑन गुडविल सर विच इज बेस्ड ऑन गुडविल मेन प्रोपोनेंट्स आर दिस पीपल कॉल्ड सेंट सेमन चार्ल्स फोरियर एंड रॉबर्ट ओवन यू रिमेंबर रॉबर्ट ओवन सर द इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट हु बिकेम ए पॉपर ओके दिस इज द सेम पर्सन रॉबर्ट ओवन then they view property in relation to its usefulness to society they recognize the evils of capitalism and propose the establishment of a new and better system of society in its place however the methods they advocated for the establishment of society were impractical and ineffective hence they came to be called as utopian socialists samajh mein aaya sir yes so are they not impractical sir definitely they are impractical the next one is karl marx marxian or scientific socialism marxian or scientific socialism so the communist manifesto you highlight that word sir okay you highlight that word communist manifesto and you highlight this both marx and engels engels is in fact his associate sir frederick engels is the person stay okay so his friend so were born in germany but spent much of their life outside germany mostly in england sir okay in england they spent most of their time 
okay so though their work in the socialist movement and through their numerous writings they gave a new direction to the socialist ideology and movement the philosophy is known as marxism which is also called as scientific socialism sir okay so the communist manifesto stated that the aim of the workers all over the world was the overthrow of capitalism and the establishment of socialism so they are not giving a call for workers of any one particular country sir they are giving a call for workers of the world are you understanding this it means that they are opposing nationalism as a concept are you following this sir this is very important in fact socialism always promotes internationalism rather than nationalism sir you have to keep it in your mind very strong it promotes internationalism rather than nationalism there itself you write sir socialism promotes internationalism socialism promotes internationalism promotes internationalism against nationalism promotes internationalism against nationalism okay so it pointed out that socialism was not merely desirable but also inevitable just like the french revolution which occurred with, without karl marx right there was no karl marx there but even then french revolution occurred just like that socialism is also going to happen okay so it says that it is inevitable and says that uh, because capitalism does not serve the needs of man and like other social and economic systems in history it would be replaced by a system better suited to human needs samajh mein aaya sir aapko yes so marx analyzed the working of capitalism in his famous book das kapital sir and he pointed out that workers produce more value than they get in the form of wages yaad hai sir aapko labor theory of value then ah uh, labor theory of value it is called as okay or labor surplus theory is also called as okay labor value labor theory of value or surplus theory also it is called as yes then this constitutes the basis of conflict in capitalist society profits can be increased at the cost of workers wages and therefore the interests of the workers and capital capitalists are always irreconcilable it can it means that you cannot compromise between the interests of the workers and capitalists sir yes so economic crises were inevitable under capitalism because of the discrepancy between the purchasing power of the workers and the total production aapko yaad hai sir main ye bhi bola tha total production kabhi bhi zyada rahenge sir workers wages ke hisab se workers will never be able to buy all the products because okay so some of their money is going as profit for the capitalist right yes so this is the reason why he says this sir purchasing power of workers and total production these crises would be resolved only if the private ownership of the means of production is abolished and the profit motive would eliminated from the system of production with this production would be carried on for social good rather than for profits for a few sir samajh mein aaya aapko yes so now after this the exploitation the exploiting classes would disappear and classless society would be emerging in which there would be no difference between what was good for the individual and for society as a whole sir so in fact adam smith proposed that the invisible hand will convert the self interest into social interest but this person said that there is no need for invisible hand so automatically the self interest will get converted into social interest bol ke isne bola tha sir samajh mein aaya aapko yes so then after that marx and engels believed that this would be accomplished by the working class which was the most revolutionary class in capitalist society they advocated the emancipation of the working class would emancipate the whole of human race from all traces of social injustice sir you following this so now you just see this sir this diagram is very interesting okay so the people who are holding okay money are usually the capitalists sir okay so no not that ha ah. yes yes okay money bank is capitalist sir ha ah. ah capitalism as described by capitalist see, sir so it means that workers and capitalists both of them are making money it is beneficial for everyone whereas capitalism as described by socialists is the capitalist is in fact exploiting the worker by putting a gun to his head sir samajh mein aaya aapko then niche dekho socialism as described by socialists is what okay all people are getting equal money and there is no difference then socialism as described by capitalist is what the worker is putting a gun to the capitalist head sir samajh mein aaya so why these two ideologies are in irreconcilable sir there is no possibility yes okay so this is the case with it now if you see communist manifesto and das kapital the ideas are one is economic determinism economic determinism is a socio economic theory that economic relationship okay are the foundation upon which all other social and political arrangements in society are based 
Okay, there you write, sir. Feudalism requires absolute monarchy, you write. Feudalism requires absolute monarchy. Requires absolute monarchy. Is it clear, sir? Yes. Okay, so now the next one is, uh, so he, there you write one statement, sir. He conducted, conducted class analysis of society. He conducted class analysis of society. He conducted the class analysis of society. He conducted the class analysis of society. Okay, and proposed ideas like historical materialism, dialectical materialism. Okay, dialectical materialism means it is a conflict between various material conditions. Okay, there you write halves versus have nots. Halves versus have nots. Halves versus have nots. Dialectical materialism. Then, uske upar historical materialism diya na, uska phir se baad mein diagram bhi milega sir aapko. Just dekh lijiye, first primitive communism to slavery, slavery to feudalism, feudalism to capitalism, capitalism to socialism, socialism to communism. So, he talks about class war sir, class conflict also referred to as class struggle and class warfare is the political tension and economic antagonism that exists in society. Okay, so which exists in society between because of the rich and poor sir. Then second one is revolution. Class war will finally lead to, is it clear sir? When one class overthrow the others, sir. Okay, so then after that, in any mode of production, there is dialogue between haves and have nots or dominant and dependent. That is called as dialectical materialism. From primitive society to slave society, slave society to feudalism, feudalism to uh, capitalist, capitalist to socialism, and socialism to communism, sir. So much may I have so, I have told you that this is the diagram. Then, communism. in this communism, there is no error in modes of production, sir. No error in mode of production. Earlier, always there used to be error. Okay, so now you write that right? because there are no haves and have nots here. As there are no haves and have nots here. As there are no haves and have nots. And they proposed cooperative control over mode of production. So much my answer, aapko? Society will be organized on the principle of from each according to his capability and to each according to his need. Okay? There is no need of state or government. Understand this? And in bracket, you write anarchy. Anarchy means lawlessness. So, in the ultimate aim of communism, there is no law, sir. Okay? Then, along with that, in communism, there is no need of nationalism. Clear? So then you write one statement, religion is considered as, religion is considered as opium of masses, opium of masses which makes them forget, which makes them forget their material conditions which makes them forget their material conditions clear sir so much my app okay so that is what he says sir okay so usually a society which is dependent on the exploitation of the working classes it will promote a ethics okay which gives highest significance to hard works Okay, don't take me wrongly, but you just uh, don't take me wrongly at all. Okay, so that's simple thing. I'll tell you in Bhagavad Gita there is a concept called karma marga. You know, what does karma marga promote, sir? Hard work without expecting any results is promoted by karma marga, sir. Huh? Nishkam karma. Okay, not interested in the result, but you are going to keep working, sir. Doesn't it support the idea of being exploited, sir? Yes or no? Okay, aap karam karte rahe, okay, so aapka results ke liye aap soche mat. Kyunki result koi phal koi aur khaya lega sir. Okay, aap to kaam karta hi rahe na aap. Samajh mein aapko? So that is how religion is considered as opium of masses. Don't take me wrongly, because Bhagavad Gita's intention was different, but the outcome is exploitation sir. Samajh mein aapko? Okay, Bhagavad Gita tries to say that nishkam karma in order to reduce the anxiety of people sir. 
but what happened okay in practice it has been used in order to exploit the workers aap kaam karte rahe okay phal ka chinta mat kar lijiye okay to kyunki phal aapko milega hi nahi ye okay that is the case with okay religion sir understand this so this way every religion has this kind of doctrine sir it's not just about uh, our uh, hinduism so but uh, it has been used wrongly so this way so this is how he, why he calls religion is the opium of masses his analysis is correct in some respects sir now the next one is workers of the world has to rise and fight for one's own right because they don't have anything to lose except for their chains that was his statement sir it was a very very revolutionary and stirring statement sir which has inspired many people huh? Uh, let the workers of the world you right they have nothing to lose except for their chains yes okay the same thing so here this is the statement sir then after that fabian socialism so it is based on the principles of this person fabius cantator who is a roman general sir ancient time mein rome mein ek general tha uska naam tha fabius cantator so what this person used to do is he never used to confront and fight wars with his enemies sir he used to he was fighting with the german tribals what he used to do is he used to surround the enemy with his army sir and he used to cut off all food and water supplies to them sir and finally what happens is okay so the enemy without fighting they are going to surrender because they are hungry they are not well provided so what happens is he avoids conflict by using the principle of gradualism rather than sudden attacks sir samajh mein aaya aapko so similarly the same way the workers they have to elect their leaders who are going to cut off the links for capitalists and finally force them to surrender to the workers sir that is the idea no need for class war clear so fabius cantator roman general it believes in the concept of gradualism no direct confrontation between classes is required no need for class war no need for violence achieve socialism by democratic means gradual change through democratic means okay there you right as the lower classes in any society as the lower classes in any society will be larger in number lower classes in any society will be larger in number in comparison to in comparison to upper and middle classes in comparison to upper and middle classes okay that is the intention of fabian socialism sir okay but definitely even with the lower classes in majority are they voting for their representatives sir what is happening then why is fabian socialism not working hmm? because the people are voting not for their class interest sir they are voting for their caste and religious interest and the people are being diverted from the real, real issues okay and they are promoting identity based politics rather than issue based politics sir uh, personality based okay identity based politics okay jo bhi naam dena hai aapko de do except for issue based politics sir because the thing which is not happening is issue based politics all other kinds of politics are happening sir is it clear so that is the reason why fabian socialism is not practically implemented properly sir except for some sort of, sort of societies like great britain where the labor party became a very important party in countries like india what happened is most of the time the voting is done on the basis of identity and personality rather than on the basis of class interest sir that is the reason why the communists were never able to win okay elections properly at the central level at any time sir except for some highly evolved societies like okay so bengal and keran okay there too the evolution is primarily intellectual evolution sir okay so it is intellectual evolution that is the reason why they were able to accept okay socialism but in other parts of the country always caste and religion they dictated electoral politics in india sir samajh mein aaya aapko yes so now the next one is criticism against socialism primarily first problem is it doesn't respect individual liberty in the name of equality it sacrifices liberty right yes economic freedom is not present everything is based on societal needs socialism moves towards dictatorship or totalitarian state model is it clear sir totalitarian state model means the government will have total control over the life of individuals sir there you right small totalitarian state government will have complete control over individual life government will have complete control over 
individual's life. Complete control over individuals. So then after that you make one more statement sir. Socialism is able to achieve, socialism is able to achieve equality in poverty, is able to achieve equality in poverty rather than equality in prosperity, rather than equality in prosperity. Okay, so then everything in socialism is dictated by states, by state, look, it looks individual as part of society and there is no individual identity here, sir. And along with that, socialist economies are always inefficient economic model. Okay, so there in bracket you write laziness, lazy, laziness and absence of innovation, you write laziness. Could I spell it out for you? Okay, so <laughs> lazy, laziness and absence of innovation sir okay laziness and absence of innovation are the problems for inefficient economic model then apart from that there is no self interest so leads to absence of incentive yes so then no proper reinvestment in production process agar profit nahi mila to aap kaise reinvest karenge sir yes so that is one more issue then economy becomes redundant there is no technological progress Absence of price signals, production is not in line with the demands of the public, sir. So, I will just give you one small example in this case, sir. So, at one point of time, Russia was producing the world's largest, okay, iron and steel, sir. Okay, highest amount of iron and steel was being produced by USSR. Okay, but in Russia, everything that is required for people, it is pro provided by the government through public distribution system, sir. Okay, our PDS shops, kaise rahenge? Vaise hi rahenge pe. Lekin, ranging from your clothes to Okay, even hair pins are also supplied by the government, sir. Understand this. Hair pins, safety pins, all kinds of things. There will be a quota. Every year, every family is going to get a fixed quota of things, sir. So, much may I have So, at one point of time, what happened is, so in the PDS system, usually the safety pins were distributed. But safety pins are such kind of things which are easily lost, right? Yes, you cannot, okay, hold on to the safety pins for quite some time. There are some things which are easily lost, sir. So, what happened is, in Russia, people started losing safety pins. Sir. So, because of which, there emerged a crisis for safety pins. But the government did not know about this crisis of safety pins. Sir. And safety pins, they became a very important commodity in black markets. Samaj mein aapko? On one side, Russia is producing the world's largest iron and steel. And at the same time, there was a huge safety pin crisis in Russia. Primarily, the problem is what? that the people do not have safety pins, it is not known to the government. Sir. If it is the, the same case with any other country, immediately the price of safety pins will increase. And once the price increases, more producers will produce safety pins, sir. So, this way, Russia had a very famous incident of the crisis of safety pins, sir. When they were producing the world's largest iron and steel, which clearly shows that in a socialist economy without the absence, with absence of price signals, what happens is the people will not get what they want, sir. The people will get only what government thinks they want, sir. In India also, I will give you one example. Take the case of MSP system, minimum support price. Government is continuously procuring rice and wheat. Okay, so our PDS system ke through, oh, baat rahe. Okay, people say, I don't want to eat rice and wheat. I want to eat millets. Will the government be able to adjust to this, sir? No. Then apart from this, most of the productive agricultural lands, they are going for rice and wheat production. So, which is leading to increase in price of millets, but, okay, the market is not able to adjust to it, sir. Samaj mein hai, sir? Okay, aapko nahi khana hai rice. Phir bhi government forcefully aapke throat pe rice hi dal rahe. And because of the government forcefully procuring rice, what is happening is the prices of millets, horticulture products, vegetables in India, they are increasing substantially and oil, Pulses, all these prices are increasing primarily because the government gives preference to rice and wheat, sir. Okay, in price, tomato price at one point of time became 200 rupees. Did the government distribute it through PDS system, sir? Huh? 
Very curious. Jada Lung Jaga Pe, maybe in some places it might have been done. They were throwing the same rice and wheat at people, even when there is a crisis for tomatoes. Did you understand this? So, this way, absence of price signals, it leads to, okay, absence of price signals production is not in line with the demands of the public. So, this is very important, sir. It also curtails international trade and commerce because it is against trade and commerce, sir. Then, socialism cannot sustain in isolation. Socialism in its implementation requires excessive coercion and a powerful state leading to corruption and bureaucratization, sir. You highlight that word bureaucratization. And in socialism, there will be no method for grievance redressal because all powers are in the hands of states. Grievance redressal means what? Aapko kuch problem hai. Ya aap bole to, aapko shoot karenge, sir. Because no questions are entertained. <laughs> okay, so that is how the things were. No mechanism for grievance redressal. Path from socialist dictatorship to stateless communism is never clearly laid out. So, e socialism se communism kaise aayega? Kisi ne bola nahi, kisi ne pucha tak nahi, sir. Kyunki socialism mein hi itna problems se. Okay, communism ko kaha jayenge hum log, chod li. Okay, ha, sir, party ka naam rakh liya aur chod diya, sir, bas. Are following this? So, now write one question, sir. Scientific socialism. That, uh, I am sorry, sir, that additional thing, it has been wrongly printed. It was uh, from a different subject. I thought that I have removed it, that affirmative action wala. So, that is not related to socialism, sir. You please cross it out. Okay, if you want to, you can read it. That is about reservation system in India. It is not... Uh, Related to socialism. I accidentally got it printed, sir. Scientific socialism is an unscientific theory and practice. Scientific socialism is an unscientific theory and practice. Full stop. Critically examine is the question. Okay. Critical exam, that's it. In fact, the question was a little different, sir. Just listen to me. Meaning is same. Scientific socialism is scientific in a name alone is the question, sir. Scientific socialism is scientific in a name alone. Critically examine is the question. Are you following this? So, which means that scientific socialism is unscientific. Yes. So, is it fine, sir? Are you people able to follow through? See, I have a small request to make. Okay, so from tomorrow on, um, let's try to extend the class a little bit. Okay, maybe by half an hour, 40 minutes. Or if you want, I can give a break for one hour and after that I can continue a uh, little bit in the afternoon. So whichever way, way is convenient, just for two days, sir. Friday and Saturday. So let me finish three, three handouts in these two days. So that uh, finally at the end, uh, okay, we will be left with uh, just two handouts for the last day, sir. So this is a request from my side. Okay, otherwise it would be difficult for me to finish the syllabus. So do you want a break and continue or what do you want to do? Two breaks in between. Okay, two breaks of half an hour each or one hour you want. Half an hour each, right? So at one o'clock I will give one more one more break, sir. So 1.30 we will start again. So and we will continue till 2.30, 2.45. Kar, okay, so that is the case from tomorrow and day after. Only two, for two days, sir. Because in Sunday also, I have to take the class in the afternoon. Okay, because there is a test in the morning. In the afternoon, I have to take the class from 2. I will get only 4 hours on the last day. Okay, 2 to 6, 6.30 maximum. So, that is the reason why. Let us try to, okay, so, hustle up a little bit, okay, and finish some sections, okay, tomorrow and day after. So, tomorrow my plan is to discuss Russian Revolution, Chinese Communist Revolution. Then, uske saath mein, socialism in Latin America will discuss. American Revolution and American Civil War, I will discuss tomorrow, sir. So, these are the five topics for tomorrow. Okay, it will finish off in three handouts. Then once I am done with this, the next day I will discuss redrawal of national boundaries, unification of Germany, Italy, First World War, Great Economic Depression and Second World War. Sir. Once I am done with the Second World War, I will be only left with colonialism, decolonization and, uh, uh, and this Cold War. Sir. So, that will be done in one class of four hours. Okay, before that only we need to focus and we need to work a little harder, sir. So, just for two days, one hour extra. Alright? So, 1.30 to 2.30 most likely. Alright, sir. So, that's it for today. Thank you for your time. Have a good day. Please try to come a little bit on time, sir. Okay, in the mornings also, I am losing unnecessarily some half an hour time I am losing. Okay, so, please come a little early to 7.30 sharp. We are going to start.